जय हिंद माई सर निधि सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक लेक्चर ऑन रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द लाइन क्वान्टिटीज एंड फेस क्वालिटीज इन डेल्टा कनेक्शन दिस इज अ टॉपिक अंडर थ्री फेस ए सी सर्किट एंड दिस इज आई एम डिस्कसिंग दिस टॉपिक अंडर द सब्जेक्ट फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विथ रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन लाइन क्वान्टिटीज एंड फेस क्वान्टिटीज इन डेल्टा कनेक्शन first we will discuss about uh, some um, a few points regarding three phase ac circuits so uh, the contents of these uh, this lecture is generation of three phase supply then reason for use of three phase system then uh, we have discussed important terminology of three phase system and the interconnections of three phases in which we have derived the relation for delta connection system so coming to the generation of three phase supply um a three phase generator produce three voltages of the same magnitude and frequency but they are displaced by 120 degree electrical from uh, one another although several polyphase systems are possible but the three phase system is by far the most popular because it is most efficient of all the supply system and if we see the three uh, the equation for three emf so uh, here first we will see the waveform of three phase voltages so here you can see that uh, we are getting three waveforms uh, er ey and eb and uh, they all are displaced uh, with each other from 120 degree so if we see the equation so er we can write em sin omega t and we know that ey is displaced it is lagging er by 120 degree so equation will be em sin omega t minus 120 degree then um, coming to the third that is ev that is em sin we can write omega t minus 240 or we can also write em sin omega t plus 120 degree now why uh, we are using three phase system so a three phase system has its own advantages and uh, the first one is the constant power constant power in a single phase uh, circuit the instantaneous power varies sinusoidally from 0 to peak value at uh, twice the supply frequency and this pulsating nature of power is objectionable for any uh, for uh, many applications so however in a balanced three phase system the power supplied at all instant of time is constant and because of this the operating characteristic of three phase apparatus in general are superior to those of similar to single phase apparatus now the uh, other advantages is greater output so the output of three phase machine is greater than the single phase machine for a given volume and weight of a machine or in other words we can say three phase machine is smaller than a single phase machine of the same rating and this is a distinct advantage of three phase system over a single phase system and the other advantage is this, it is cheaper the three phase motors are much smaller and less expensive than single phase motor and uh, uh, because the less material that is copper iron or insulation is required here moreover three phase motors are self starting that is they do not require any special provision to get them started however single phase motor require internal starting devices so and these uh, the main advantage of these three phase motors are that they are self starting here no external provision is required to start the motor whereas uh, if you see in single phase motor we require a, a special uh, system for for motor internal starting device we need to start the single phase motor now the other advantage is power transmission economics so um, if we um, the transmission of electric power by three phase system is cheaper then single phase system even though uh, three conductors are required instead of two for example to transmit the same amount of power over a fixed distance at a given voltage the three phase system require only 3 by 4 the weight of copper then that required by the single phase system and this means a saving in the number of strength of uh, transmission towers so this is a very big advantage of uh, three phase system the less conducting material is required in case of uh, three phase system now uh, there are some important terminologies of uh, three phase system so we will discuss that uh, the first is balanced three phase supply system so what is balanced three phase supply system 
So a balanced three phase supply system, it could be a star connected or delta connected. So we will see this connection in the coming slides. Uh, is one in which the three phase voltages are equal in magnitude and frequency but displaced 120 degree from one another. The same is true with regards to line voltage. So in this chapter we shall deal with the balanced three phase supply system only and uh, therefore the wording three phase supply, three phase voltage etc means balanced three phase supply. So whatever we are discussing, we are discussing for the uh, balanced three phase supply. In fact, all electric supply companies make effort to ensure the availability of three-phase balance supply at all times. Now, type of three-phase loads. So, there are two types of three-phase loads, star connected load and delta connected load. The three-phase load is said to be balanced if load in each phase is same. That is, load in each phase has the same impedance and power factor. And if a three phase load, it could be a star interconnected, does not meet any one of the above requirement, it is said to be unbalanced. So if the if the load in each phase is not same, means the load uh, if uh, in each phase we have a different impedance or a different power factor, means it is a unbalanced load. But if uh, the impedances of all the phases are same, the and the power factor are also same, then it is a balanced load. The next is the phase sequence and this is a very important point. So phase sequence, the order in which the uh, voltages in three phases of an alternator reach their maximum positive value is called phase sequence or phase order. So the importance of this phase sequence is right, if we want to change the direction of rotation of motor, so by changing the phase sequence, we can change the direction uh, of the rotation of it motor. So, in uh, our previous slide, we have seen this waveform. So, the phase sequence for this particular waveform is R, Y and B. So, this is the phase sequence. The phase sequence, it is um, reaching its uh, peak value and after this E, Y is, uh, uh, the second is E, Y and then third is e, uh, e, B. So, the phase sequence will be R, Y and B. So now coming to the three phase supply connection. So how we connect uh, the three phase uh, supply. So we can connect three phase supply as the star connected also and delta connected also. So in uh, star connection, uh, the similar ends of the three phases are joined together within the alternator and three lines are run from the other free ends as you can uh, see in this uh, picture and the common point n is called the neutral point and in delta connection neutral conductor may or may not be brought out if a neutral conductor exists the system is called three phase four wire system if there is no neutral conductor it is said three phase three wire system so here we can see the starting end um, and the uh, finishing end they are combined together so, B2, Y2, R2, they are combined together. And this is also a star connection. Here you can see this R2, Y2 and B2. It is connected here. And R1, Y1, B1, they are connected to the load. So, this type of connection is called uh, star connection. Then uh, we have uh, delta connection. So, in delta connection, the dissimilar ends uh, of the phases are joined to form a closed mesh. And the three lines are run from the junction point. And in a delta connection, no neutral point exists and only three phase three wire system can be formed here. So here you can see the uh, dissimilar end. Like if it is the, um, is if this is the finishing point, so this finishing point is connected to the starting point of the uh, Y1. Similarly, the uh, finishing point of Y2 is connected to the starting point of B1 and here, the B2 is connected to the R1. So here this is the, uh, the closed mesh is formed here. Here also this is this is also a delta connection. So here you can see the finishing end is connected to the starting end of another coil. Again here the finishing end is connected to the starting end here and this finishing end is connected to the starting here of the uh, next coil. So this is also a delta connection. 
now uh, there are some terms uh, in this uh, 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 in this connections so uh, we have a line voltage and line current so what is this line voltage and line current so line voltage basically it is a potential difference between any two lines of supply so here you can see in this diagram this is the supply the three phases are r y and b so the potential difference between these two lines so potential difference between these two lines here this is v r y and this is called line and this is called line voltage similarly the potential difference between y and b which is v y b this is again a line voltage and potential difference between this is again a uh, line voltage now the next term is line current so what is line current the current passing through any line is called line current so current passing through these line this is ir here you can see ir then uh, current passing through here the iy and ib all these will be called as uh, line current uh, and here in delta connection also here you can see this ir iy ib all these currents are line current and uh, this vry and again if we find voltage between vyb and here v vr so these are Uh, line voltages so the potential difference between these two lines are called uh, um line voltage and current flowing through these lines are called line current the next is uh, the voltage across of the phase voltage now what is phase voltage the voltage across any branch of the three phase load is called phase voltage so here we can see this is a star connected load and the voltage across this phase that is v um, this vrn or vbn or vyn this is uh, these voltages are phase voltages and here also in delta connection also you can see the the voltage across this uh, zp h1 these are the loads and the voltage across this uh, is vry here we have, we have vyb and vbr so these are phase voltages now what is the uh, phase current so phase current is current passing through any branch of the three phase load is called uh phase current is called phase current so here we can see in this um, star connected the ir current is coming uh, in this branch so this is phase current here iy is coming so this is phase current and iy is coming in this branch so this is a uh, phase current and if we see in delta connection here we can see in this particular branch iry current is flowing and in this particular branch iyb current is flowing and here ibr current is flowing so these currents are uh, called phase current so i hope the difference between the line voltage and phase voltage is clear so i am repeating again the line voltage the line voltage is basically this is the potential difference between any two lines the potential difference between any two line and these are the lines these are the lines so potential difference between any two lines is called um uh, called line voltage and the voltage across any branch of the three phase load is called phase voltage so voltage across um this load or voltage across this load or this load will be called as phase voltage similarly now what is line current and phase current line current the current passing through these lines so these this r y b the current passing through these lines is line current and uh, now what is um, uh, phase current phase current this current passing through any branch of the uh, three phase load is called phase current so current passing through these phase load is called so this will be three three phase load is called phase current now we will derive relation between line quantities and phase quantities in delta connection so uh, now this is a uh, delta connected load so here we will derive relation between line quantities and phase quantities in delta connection so first we will see here uh, you can see this uh, here it is written vry and vyb and here we have vbr so what are these voltages these voltages are line voltages and line voltages we denote as vl right these are the line voltages and um, similarly uh, now the line current here we have ir is equal to iy is equal to ib and these are this ir iv ib 
these are line current we denote this line current as i l and now uh, coming to the load side we have vry the voltages which are defined we should know what voltages are there and then vbr and these voltages are phase voltage this will be denoted as vph and now these current iry ivb and vbr so we have RYB, then IYB and IBR. This is equal to these are phase current, right? These are phase current. Now we will derive relation between uh, these line and phase quantities. Now just see this uh, VRY. We know that this VRY this is line voltage. Now what is the relation of this line voltage with the phase voltage? So if you see this line voltage, if you see the, in this VRY, what is connected? If you travel from VR to VY, here you can see that this ZP, this is connected here, right? So if you just see this VRY in this terminal, only this ZPH is connected. So it can be shown as here like this is R and this is Y and in this, what is connected? this ZPH is connected. So what will be voltage across this? The voltage across this terminal is denoted as VRY and this voltage is between the lines. So this will be called as line voltage and voltage across this load will be phase voltage and this voltage will also be equal to VRY. What does it mean? It means that the line voltage is equal to <coughs> sorry <coughs> phase voltage. So in case of delta connected load line voltage is equal to phase voltage. So just by the observation here, we can see that line voltage is equal to phase voltage. Now we will uh, derive a relation between the, now we are de derive the relation between the line current and the uh, phase current. Now we will derive relation between line current and phase current. So just now apply, sorry, applying KCL at node R. So this is node R. Now we will apply KCL at node R. So node R means um, applying KCL means in we will write incoming current is equal to outgoing current. So at this node R, the incoming current is IR. So we will write IR. And at this node, incoming current is IBR. So IR plus IBR. And this will be equal to outgoing current, which is IRY. IRY. So all these are the phasor additions. So we will draw a line here. IRY. This I. So. And uh, so here we can write this, uh, this IR is line current and this IBR and IRY is uh, phase current. So we will write relation uh, as line current is equal to phase current. So here we can write this IR is equal to IRY minus IBR. So these are the phasor addition, right? Now next again applying KCL at uh, node y so if we'll apply ksl at node y so here you can see the incoming current is iry so here you can write iry plus now what is the incoming current here iy it is again entering at node y so iy and this is equal to what is outgoing current here is iyb iyb right so here also we can write iy is equal to IYB minus IRY, right? And similarly, we can find uh, uh, equation for node B. So for node B, we can write equation here. I am writing here. So I am writing right IB. This IB will be equal to IBR. IBR minus this. Uh, so IBR minus IYB minus IYB, right? So IB 
IV is incoming current. This will be equal to IBR. This is outgoing and minus IVB because it is incoming. IYB is incoming current. So, I have written minus IYB. So, all these are the phase addition. So, we got three equations, right? So, what are the main three equations here? Here we can see the three equations. This one, this one and this one, right? So, we will uh, draw a phase diagram for uh, this. So, this IR, IY and, uh, and IV, right? See these, uh, just draw the line here. These are the phasor addition. So, we have these three equations. Now, draw the phasor diagram for this. So, for drawing the phasor diagram here, we will take, uh, we will draw these currents. So, IR, IY and IV. Uh, these currents are? These currents are uh, line current, right? And these line current is equal to IRY minus IBR. So, if we solve these two, we will get this line current, right? So, first we will draw these. Uh, we know that if we do IRY minus IBR, we will get IR. So, uh, first we will draw these phase current. So, we will draw this phase current. So, first we will draw, sorry. <coughs> so, first we will draw IRY, then we will draw IYB and this is IBR. So, these are phase current, right? So, I am writing it as IPH. This is phase current, IYB. Okay. So now, uh, next is, so IRY, IYB and IBR. So we have drawn this and the angle between these will be, we know that 120 degree, right? Three phase supply, the difference is 120 degree. Now next, we want to draw IRY minus IBR. So we have IRY, IRY on our phaser. What we require minus IBR. Minus IBR means if you draw uh, IBR in this opposite direction, you will get minus IBR. You will get minus IBR. So, here you will just draw this in, just draw in opposite direction. This is minus IB. R. And the resultant of these two you will get IR. So just draw one parallel parallel line here and one parallel line here. Right? And the resultant of this will be IR. Right? And what will be this angle? This angle will be 60 degree. Right? And uh, what will be this angle? This angle will be 30 degree, right? Okay. Now, next, we have to draw IY is equal to IYB minus IRY. So, IYB, this is already in phase of and now we need to draw minus IRY. So, this minus IRY, so just draw the line opposite to this IRY. So, this is minus IRY and Resultant of this IRY and IVB. So, just draw uh, a line parallel to here and one line parallel to here. So, this will be equal to IY, right? This will be equal to IY. Now, next IB is equal to IBR minus IYB. So, IBR, it is already in the phasor, right? Now, what we need minus IYB. So, minus IYB, you have IYB here. So, just draw a line opposite to this. So, this will be minus IYB and uh, the resultant of this from here you will draw a line parallel to this and from here you will draw a line parallel to this. So, the resultants will be this will be equal to IB right. 
So this IB, this is line current, right? This IR is also equal to line current and this IR, this is also equal to line current. Now how to find the relation, right? Now if we draw the diagonal here, so this is you can see a quadrilateral. So if you draw the diagonal here and you can see we are talking about the balance system. So uh, you can see that this structure is a rhombus and the property of rhombus is that its diagonal are perpendicular bisector right so uh, this angle will be a 90 degree so let this is o this is a this is b sorry this is b and this is c right so o a b c so now uh, you know that this is i r y now what will be cos 30 degree cos 30 degree will be equal to so you know that um, this is a perpendicular, right? So cos 30 degree will be equal to what? IR by 2, you can write IR by 2 by IPH, right? IR by 2 means this is IR. So OA, OA and AB, they will be equal. And uh, so this uh, here I can write OA is equal to AB which is equal to IR by 2, right? And this IR is nothing but this is IL. So, I can write IL by 2. So, here we, I can write IL by 2 upon IPH. So, cos 30 degrees under root 3 by 2. So, this is equal to IL by 2 by IPH. So, from here we can derive a relation that IL is equal to under root 3 IPH. Right? So, under root 3 IPH. So, this is the relation for delta connected load. So, for relation for delta connected load is we know that VL So, we have VL is equal to BPH, right? And IL is equal to under root 3 IPH. So, this is the relation for delta connected load. And uh, now, we will see uh, uh, total power. So, total power will be P is equal to 3 into power per phase. So, per phase means VI cos phi. So, per phase voltage is VPH, current is IPH cos phi. And for delta connection load, we know that VPH is equal to VL and I, IPH is equal to IL under root 3. So, putting this value in this equation, so VPH will be replaced with VL and this IPH will be replaced with IL by root 3. So, you will get P is equal to under root 3 VL IL cos phi, right? Where cos phi is the power factor of each phase. And uh, similarly, we can find reactive power as under root 3 VL IL sin phi. And its unit is VAR, that is volt ampere reactive, its unit is watts, and apparent power is unit is volt ampere, which is under root 3 VL IL. Right now, coming to the numerical, here three similar coils, um, each having resistance of 5 ohm and inductance of 0 0.02 Henry, are connected in delta to a 440 volt three phase 50 hertz supply. So, calculate the line current and total power absorbed here. So, here we can see the reactance of coil XL is 2 pi FL, which is equal to 6.28. And impedance per phase we can find under root R square plus XL square. So, after uh, we will get 8.05 ohms. And power factor we can find by R by Z. So, which is equal to 0 0.622. Then phase voltage is equal to line voltage in case of delta connector. So, this will be equal to 440 volt. Now, coming to the phase current. Phase current is VPH upon ZPH. So, VPH upon ZPH, you are getting the phase current and you know the relation of phase current and line current in case of delta connected load which is, is equal to under root 3 IPH. So, this is 94.8 ampere and the power absorbed is under root 3 VL IL cos phi. So, putting all the values, you will get 45,000 watt. So, these are the references which I have uh, referred for this lecture. Thank you very much. Jai.